Deborah, merciful God, you're alive. It's going to be okay. I'm here. Am I dreaming? <coughs> Is that... Grenth torment me? Is it really you? You're safe now, Sergeant. Can you tell us what happened to the Falcons? Captain Thackeray! Sir! <coughs> we were ambushed by centaurs. They knew our patrol routes, our tactics, everything. It's all right, Debs. We'll make sure all of you get back to Divinity's Reach. The nightmare is over. Thank you. And thank you, Captain Thackeray. You're both heroes. Well, here we are, in awe at last. After a huge, long adventure spanning many years, covering our imprisonment at the hands of the centaurs, our free, uh, our escaping and freedom afforded by our younger brother, now unfortunately deceased and passed away, here is Deborah having risen to join the pact. I like to think that she was spurred on by, with that decision, by the, you know, the devastating tragedy of Claw Island. And, uh, so the question is, what will she do amongst pact forces? So I like the idea that Deborah stands up and fights the good fight with regard to a lot of these side stories our other characters are kind of bombing through. She's a little bit more experienced. She's a little bit older. She's uh, more willing to take up in these big engagements. And so that's what we're going to be focusing on here. Sighing out at Triumph Plaza and the packed rally point here in the Straits of Devastation. There is, of course, a pretty profound side story we've yet to see. That being the Temple of Balthazar. So the way that the temple works is you've got your three invasions. And if you manage to push one of them, it doesn't have to be all three, just one. An escort will take place that comes here, and eventually the bigwigs here and the mines here will decide to attack the cathedral. Kind of as a side objective, uh, you know, next to establishing supply lines and stuff closer to Ara. You'll see as we read up here that leaders at the packed rally point are awaiting reinforcements from the central, northern, and southern invasions before the assault on the Temple of Balthazar can begin. I, the way that that's worded, I get the feeling that after launch, the devs decided they didn't like this idea, that it had to be all three, and they cut it down to being just one. And so we'll see how it goes. Looking on the world map a second ago, I did notice there was a player there with a boss icon. So I don't know exactly what was going on, but I'm pretty sure that that is currently under Risen Control. And that's what I want to do. So there's a lot to talk about in terms of Deborah's capabilities here uh, and her gear and stuff. So you've already seen weapon skills and you've seen our main mechanic. And I've told you that we can be quite a powerful support character. Well, we've not seen that anywhere in the series so far. And that's what Deborah's going to be really good at. If we take a look at her gear right now, here I was on her dies. Uh, and we say mouse over this stuff you'll see that she has uh, exotic t t uh, rarity stuff. She's like really well geared here. All right, again, we can say it's because she's a little bit older, a little bit, you know, uh, more mature and wizard. She spent more time, got better gear. So you'll see that she on her gear has power. Which isn't too important for a supporty build, but she's got power there. Then she has toughness, which makes her tankier, very good for Guardian. And she has healing power, and lots of healing power. This combination of stats is known as Clerics. So she is a Cleric Guardian right now. Cleric being one of the main stat sets right when the game first came out that allowed you to be kind of a healer. And uh, the thing is, when the game first came out, a lot of the skills and the traits and things didn't make being healing that good. Now, though, it's brilliant. So the idea is we're going to be amongst large zergs of other players and we're going to be keeping them all alive. Where this kind of play style really shines and one of the rare places where it shines because in most other areas, you'll need damage for yourself. So, uh, yes, she's got uh, a variety of weapons here. First of all, she's got this star. Off. This is known as the Memories of the Sky. It's one of the special random exotics that can drop throughout the game. If you get really lucky, sometimes you'll find just really special gear comes down. It's not like a precursor, but it does have like a unique skin and a unique name and idea behind it. This one in particular is made to look like an old classic Guild Wars 1 skin. And same as well when we go to our Mace Shield, we have a similar setup here. This is a very iconic Guild Wars 1 shield skin. It returned in Guild Wars 2. It's ultra shiny and looks bad and as super classic skin that I wanted to show you guys and the mace as well I think this is just like a serif mace that I've kept her on here But when we look at the sigils as well, the story gets even more interesting 
Again, it's all vanilla stuff, so we have the Superior Sigil of Life, which is one of these charging sigils like we saw with Bloodlust before. Gain a charge of extra healing power every time we kill a foe. And so as we run through and millions of Orions attack us here, as we strike them, Deborah will start being able to heal more and more and more and more and more, which is good, as long as she can stop herself going down. Uh, so that's on the, the staff, and then she also has the Superior Sigil of Water, which is when we critically hit someone... We heal around us. Just a, It's like an extra little skill that fires off where we heal around us. Now, on Cleric's gear, you don't really crit much. But we can hope that we'll get fury from our allies and stuff and the adrenaline of the battle. And we'll get a couple of crits every now and then. But, you know, that's a kind of a basic healing setup sigils for the launch of the game that I wanted to show you guys. Uh, when we look at the mace shield, uh, once again, we have a sigil of water. And down here, I have a sigil of undead slaying. We are in awe after all. And I think Deborah would set that kind of stuff up. So, yeah, uh, the only other thing really for her to look into is skills, which of course, uh, utility skills, that is. We obviously know the left-hand side, and that's what the majority of what we're going to be doing is uh, involving, you know, dropping the staff twos and the empowers and stuff. But what about over here? Well, for that, we need to do some training. So I'm going to immediately open us up with signets here. We're going to buy our way all the way in, okay? The signets are generally really good, and mostly because I want to show you the elite. So here it is, signet of courage. So the passive of this is that every few seconds, we heal around us, just over and over and over again. And I can show you what this looks like here. If we get ourselves into combat with, uh, I don't know, like this Risen Preserver over here, you'll notice that Deborah just keeps pulsing this healing aura around her. And it's actually really good and really fun. The Signet didn't do this at release, um, but now it does. And it's a cool side of playing a core guardian that heals that I think most players miss out on. So can you see this like blue ring that keeps appearing around us? Look at this. Look at how we pulse. Look, ready? We pulse. And every single time, this is a substantial heal. We pulse again. It's just a substantial heal. Really fun for open world when you're in these big zergs and there's going to be tons of players around us. That will just keep rolling by. Signet of Courage. Really fun. And then on top of it, we can actually activate it to do a 100% life heal for everyone. If we have a warrior with us that's got like 40,000 health or something obscene, we can just cast this actively and heal for 40k in one spell. I mean, that would be kind of a crazy situation to be in, but that's the thing you could do as a guardian. So, really like this, um, and that's kind of why I want to buy into signets. But there are some other signets that we can make use out of. For example, this one here, the Signet of Mercy. This passively increases our healing power. So we get even more, which then passively boosts this and passively boosts all the other stuff. And then the active on this is that we can revive people. After that, we can look at more signets later. Uh, let's buy back into our skills. And instead of signets now, let's look at shouts. And we're going to pick all of these up. And as exciting as the elite is, we'll hold off for now. I'm going to get the shout heal. It's this ability here called receive the light. Heal yourself and allies in a cone in front of you. So here we just spray out in front of us. A splash of heal, and this is an obnoxiously huge heal. We can just kind of use that to directly target any allies we like and just splash a big, big, big heal on them. So that's really nice. And then we can do even more shouts that are just generally useful. This one here is great. Retreat. We give ourselves and everyone around us Aegis, which means everyone's blocking, and Swiftness. So we can just cast that, and that will just pack out uh, uh, blocks for people. And then last but not least... Let's try, at least for this video, a skill that's not actually that good, to be honest, in my opinion. But we can show it off. Hold the line. So this is a shout that gives people protection and regeneration. That's all it does. But it's kind of cool. And, you know, these skills all have sound effects and stuff on them that I want you guys to hear at least once. So here, for example, hold the line. Hold the line. Here, Deborah shouts it out. And here as well, retreat. Retreat. And receive the light. Receive the light. She screams that out. So there you go. That's kind of the idea. Um, now, I suppose we could talk about food as well, but we'll we'll put, we'll pace ourselves and push it out. Let's go do the Temple of Balthazar. You guys have already seen the original invasions. All I've got to do now, as Deborah, is push us to this point, and we'll move on. So I'll see you guys for that in a second. What's that structure? It looks particularly ominous. That was the Tower of Vizier Kilbron. He sunk his own nation to prevent my people from taking ore. Let's keep moving. I feel as though I'm being watched here. More? These Risen don't quit, do they? It's a good thing I love killing them. That gate is as good as gone, now that we're here. Let's knock and see if anyone's home. Here we come, Zaitan. We made it ashore. Now what? 
Now we blast our way into ore, grab a weapon, and get going. I'll defend the weapons. You concentrate on taking down the gate. We'll have that gate forced open in no time. As long as we hold this landing, we can keep sending troops into the temple. Do the officers have any idea how we deal with this? Well, we got a whole army ready. What more do we need? Our landing has been secured. We'll leave the rest up to you. You all fought well to make it here. Keep up the fight and hold the landing for us. The rest of you, follow me. We must press onward. Behind me! This is not over! So here we're on our way, Warmaster Urho says from here the pact is going to assault the Orion Altar of Betrayal. Oh god, he's running really fast here. The Risen won't give up on their temple easily. Why is the pact assaulting the Altar of Betrayal in particular? Well, Zaitan reaches across or uh, from the temple to rouse statues of Balthazar into attacking our invasion force. Well, let's go take the temple then. Our troops aren't ready to set out yet, but I hope you stay on the assault effort. So yeah, this is the phase of the escort we haven't seen yet. Um, which is actually getting these guys to the Triumph Plaza. Cut them down and keep on the move. So you'll see here, this isn't just any escorts. On the right, it actually says packed members alive, seven out of seven. And here's the funny thing. While this is the first cathedral that we come to, it's actually the hardest meta event in all of original Guild Wars 2 in terms of how easy it is to fail. I seriously desperately mean that. Oh, we just got a Platinum Doubloon, which is very rare loot as well from Lodge. So, uh, basically, if the if the NPCs die en route to these, there's actual failure conditions where you can't just revive them comfortably and be done with it and move on about your day. But the event will actually fail, and you'll have to go back and do one of the invasions from early again, which meant that this was a really punishing thing. Uh, the thing with the Temple of Balthazar is... That when you'll see soon, you actually get some very important loot from the end of it related to legendary weapon crafting. And that's why the devs spent extra effort on it. It's kind of fitting to me that Deborah goes for her first ever meta event dealing with Balthazar, the god that had blessed and favoured uh, Casey way back when. I love the idea as well, by the way, of her having picked up his staff where he left it on Claw Island or something. But I also want to show you lots of new skins, so yeah. Even if I, even if we don't have many player allies here, you'll see I've got my com tag up. People can see that this is going on. Right now, I seem to have just a minion monster with me. It's kind of cool because I can keep the minion monster alive and do fun things like that and all of his minions. You know, uh, even with very f low numbers, we should be able to get through this safely. I've been waiting for you. Stay alert. Keep your wits about you. So you'll see the meta's updated. Reinforcements from the Southern Invasion, that's us right now, are en route to the Pack Valley Point. So anyone around now on the map can know we're, get, we're getting closer. I've been so here's something you. maybe interesting. Uh, here in all, we've just had another player arrive with us. And if you listen very carefully, you'll hear the sounds of horses whinnying and you'll see rainbows flying past us. This is uh, the first appearance of a legendary weapon in the series, I think, that we've deliberately been looking at closely. Here, check it out. That guy has a legendary short bow, which fires rainbow unicorns around. Yeah, seriously, it's called the Dreamer. It's quite a notorious legendary as well because of that horse sound effect. That means a lot of the time when you get to end game content, which is where we are now, you tend to hear players with it, you know, firing it away. In those first few months right after launch, when legendary weapons were still so extraordinary and so rare, you didn't see it much, but nowadays, it happens a lot. An interesting uh, sort of thing about design there, really, whether you can justifiably implement items like that, because yes, there'll be a sense of scarcity, so it's okay if they're ludicrous. Might exist at first, but that always, over time, will eventually break down. Anyway, there you go, that's the end of the escort. Brilliant, so pack forces have begun to prepare the assault now. Friends, here. They're here. Welcome. Thank you. We needed a safe place to prepare for the battle ahead. And look, we've gathered quite a group of people as uh, the time's gone by now in the way that dynamic events work. We move on in. And all we have to do now is just wait a little bit 
for this all to trigger and kick off. We'll be watching close. I think they give you like a five minute wind up and leeway. So I'll be watching for that. We've got our 25 stacks of life now. Should be good. Obviously this build doesn't have traits, but one thing at a time. This rally point has become a crucial staging ground for packed forces who've made landfall in ore. From here, pack leaders will be taking our forces further south towards the heavily guarded altar of betrayal, home to one of Zaitan's powerful minions. We need to capture that altar and remove the dragon's minion to disrupt our enemy's hold on ore. So I'll make this short. We'll push south from this staging point and head for the altar of betrayal. We have to we break the risen hold of the altar. If we do this right, we can claim another foothold for the pact in Zaitan's kingdom. Get in formation. Zaitan's kingdom. Wow, that's how they describe it. This is our rallying point Let's for the coming of soul on the altar of betrayal. What's so special about it? Well, Zaitan controls Balthazar's statues from that temple somehow. They're attacking our invasion forces across all. Well, let's go shut it down. Love your enthusiasm. He says the assault forces are ready. Actually is. We're marching along now. Uh, so we're going to be following Keeper Fleet Hunter. Now, the NPCs we have here, we have to keep alive. They are a finite resource. And if they die, that's it. we got to go back. Again, I, I do not say this lightly. This is the hardest cathedral of them all. What do you need to know? And it's right here at the start, getting really thrown in on the fire here. Oh, I hope we do well. I hope we got enough players. It looks like quite a few have, have appeared here. Check it out. Look, there's a script sentry. We've got whispers. Oh, man, this was intense back in the day as well, setting this all up. It's only going to get uglier for us. So in we go. Uh, pack morale is... So this bar represents the health of our general team. It will get chunked down every time someone dies. Fight what cannot be fought. They're on top of us. Fight! So what we want to do is focus entirely on keeping them up. The Risen will come in enormous waves, all right? You notice this is a group event. It's not for soloing. And the best thing you could do is actually drop CCs and blinds and things uh, on where you anticipate them spawning. So they never really get to your NPCs at all. So here, you see this Crusader's really low. I'm going to have to try and heal him up. It's going to be hard, though, because the game's going to prioritize my human allies over the NPCs for as long as they stand together. And that might be kind of tricky. Just going to try and keep blocks and stuff. Come on, Crusader. Stay alive. Oh, God. This could be bad. All right, into our mace shields. Knocking them away. Dropping the mace too. So our mace auto attack chain, the final hit, is a good heal around us. So I'm just going to try and auto chain as much as possible. Excelsior. The F1 isn't too important, but because we're swarmed with allies here, I know that pressing it will be useful. All right, there you go. Even more risen over here. And we're going to start getting spammed with tons of loot as well as we play this. One of the, the fun and kind of defining aspects of it. So here we go. The way that healing priority works is I can only hit five allies with my heals. Most of them. Uh, and the game will try to put them on players instead of NPCs. But if there's only NPCs nearby, then I'll get them instead. And that's what I'm really aiming for. So I'm going to try and stand really close to whoever I want to heal. And uh, we'll just let the signet just keep pulsing away over and over and over and over again. Keep everything going here. All right, so the pack morale is still at max. This is good. Back in the day, by now already, the pack morale would be going down a bit. No, no word of a lie. So I'm, I'm quite happy with this so far. Uh, obviously, there's been a bit of power creep over the years where skills and skill balances improved to the point that people can get through stuff easier. You've been seeing that all series, right? But this can still be a chance. So here, watch. Those guys are charging in. So I'm going to drop the line. And I'm going to interrupt them all on the line, right? And stop them getting to my NPCs, see? And this is the kind of thing that Guardian can do. Um, so, yeah, all right. And uh, now that they're knocked back there, and I've got my friends, we'll come back here. I'm going to be a bit spammy with my shouts here, at least, and just kind of use them selfishly, because I'm cleric, right? So I'm very tanky. It's unlikely that I'll need to use this selfishly, so I may as well use the cooldown as quickly as possible, just on the off chance it'll help someone out. Don't come near me. Don't okay, we're getting back attacked here. And so you'll notice we're actually climbing the mountains here. Look, look, look. There's the statue. That's the cathedral there of Balthazar. All right, so look, look, look. People are dying now. Um, we just had a downside ally, and you'll notice that the pack morale got chunked down. That means that some of the pack died. Look, here, dead. Oh, no, they're risen bodies. Someone of the pack did die there, though. Some NPC. So we've got to be really careful of that. Um, I'm watching their health as best Where I can. Where are they all coming from? Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to cast in power here. Give everyone protection. Cleanse. 
And as the waves get bigger, this gets worse and worse and worse. And back in the day as well, if you had like an entire map full of players doing this, like we've seen, say, fighting the Claw of Jormag and stuff, the waves of Risen can get even bigger than you're currently looking at, which is quite a lot. Um, right. Come seeking knowledge. Okay, so you hear that the Asura was speaking there? Is too small. I can almost guarantee that's because players in the area are trying to pick up loot by pressing F, which is also the same keybind as speaking to allies. Uh, oh god, I think someone else died there as well, didn't they? And we got to keep them alive. Eventually, what will happen as that bar drops, as we start to fail more and more, you'll figure out who, like, the one final NPC is, and everyone will, like, just turtle on that one NPC <laughs> and try their best to keep it alive. As long as you get one guy up there, you can progress to the big fight at the top of the mountain. So let's keep climbing up. We've got Plague Ringers here. I'm just going to keep knocking them around. Knocking is kind of a weird thing in big events like this, so Deborah's got to be careful of because... You kind of don't want to knock enemies out of AoEs that say allied elementalists and stuff are dropping. But at the same time, you do want to interrupt their abilities. So it's kind of a trade-off. Quite often, I would say try not to use knockbacks and things. But um, I'm not actually sure what the right answer is to that. So anyway, Deborah's doing good so far. Fight what cannot be fought. Continue to get more loot. Magister Davy. Some of these guys are actually speaking to us. I wonder what they say here. Okay, so here's a Priory Explorer who's quite low. So I just pressed my F2 and chunked their health up. Did you see that? Um, so that was pretty nice. And now I'll double tap my shield and try again. It missed them this time, though. Come on, keep going, guys. They're all the way back here. There we go. Nice. And so these guys, I don't know whether they actually necessarily do break combat all on their own. Um, and, uh, and heal up. Uh, I think eventually they should, and they should go back up to 100, but it doesn't look like they are right now. Alright, that's a big burst of damage, so I'm just going to cast my heal. Okay, good. Yeah, I want to get a bit of dialogue from them. Here we go. The Risen are an omnipresent threat on this shore. Keep your wits about you, this guy says. Uh, this guy says, watch out. We already spoke to him. What does Tactician uh, Death Strider say? Jesus Christ. Stick together and watch out for the hordes. Oh, I am. So it's really important that on my stuff, I do stay in combat. Because if I'm not in combat, my signet won't be pulsing. <laughs> and, you know, that's quite important. <laughs> if I'm not using skills and just getting dialogue, I should at least let my signet get some value. Alright, let's roll on up this hill. And here we go. The Cathedral of Glorious Victory. So Balthazar, the god of war and fire. And this was his cathedral. This is actually technically the second one... Well, uh, we've visited a few. We've visited Lissa now. We've visited Dwayna. We've not really reclaimed any of them. The closest we can maybe say we've reclaimed was Abaddon's Deep Underwater. And I guess in terms of, like, progression through all, this is kind of the second one. But also the hardest, as I've said. So everybody's kind of moving up, but we got to keep with our NPCs. So we've got to make sure that they're the ones we keep alive. So I'm just casting my stuff on them. Look at the, look at the, the absolute armies of Zaitan stuff here. This is what it's all about. This is what Aura is all about. The Road to Ruination meta and all that kind of stuff. Here it is. And even here in 2019, people have good reason to come here. Um, because of the reward. And it's to do with Balthazar. Who, and it's to do with how we interacted with him in the end game of the first game, too. No. Which some of you guys who watched that last series might uh, be interested in. Alright, so keep healing them. Oh my god, it's so much. What is this horrible, like, fetid gust that they're blowing at us? Here we move forward, you'll see that there is a defunct waypoint ahead up there. And uh, there's kind of all this miasmic, poisonous stuff in the region. There's some beautiful detail on this event. If you guys look in the skies, you see these choppers up here? Uh, depending on if you succeed or fail, those choppers, like, get blown out of the sky and stuff. And that's separate to, I think, the anti- Oh, no, 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 that might be the anti-aircraft event there, actually. It's live. You can see that the AI is- Anyway, looking at the sky is always interesting here. Here we get some powerful blood, more good loot. Um, even today, I'm interested in that. Crystalline dust, that's good loot. Oh, farming these. It brings me back, guys. It really does. All right, there you go. Uh, the waypoint for the Cathedral of Glorious Victory. So, on our mini-map right now, I think we're going to make it so I don't have to be so intense here. We'll blow a ton of heals and stuff, and now we're going to look at the map. Can you see that there's this big icon here? There, several of these will appear as we explore through all. This one's for the Temple of Balthazar. It has cross swords, just like a waypoint means it's not claimed. Once we claim it, the cross swords will go away, all right? Um, so that's kind of our objective here. And when the cross swords aren't there, you can waypoint in. You'll find unique vendors and rewards and things related to your success. So let's keep claiming it out. This started with just me down by the Lashiat Gate on the Southern Invasion. And now look at this kind of epic scenario we're in. <laughs> uh, pushing forward just a little bit. We're trying to get to the plateau. You'll see that there's a statue of Balthazar up there. And as the NPCs have been mentioning, there is some kind of big Zaitan minion. 
All right, so they say they want to put these things down. No one's really talking about much except the battle, but that's perfectly fair. Give everybody a bit more might. Keep cleaving our way through. Christ, how many Risen is it we kill here? <laughs> Probably more than several of the past personal story steps stacked end on end. <laughs> uh, and of course, Guardian as a, as, with the staff as well is pretty good for looting and tagging things. Oh my god, okay, so we just got blown up. Yeah, that's a risk. The bloated creepers... Uh, if they blow up in the wrong place, they could just annihilate a few NPCs all at once. So you've got to be careful of that. Particularly ones that come from behind. You notice how I'm still healing back here. Most of our players have ran ahead. But the key NPCs are back here. I was never here. Not that. What? Well, once we get out the stairs, we should be to the next phase. And seize the altar for the pack. Here it is. Okay, so seize the aura of betrayal before pack morale can be broken. So the morale is another thing like our health, right? Um, what we got to do is claim this region for ourselves by having more allies than enemies in it And there are a lot of risen, but there's a lot more of us it seems so we're slowly building the bar up Storm the order of betrayal and drive the risen out of the temple they're now saying so that's good Some player here has dropped some food some guild food if you remember I showed you that before you can place food down Well, they've actually done that here. So by pressing F I've got some it doesn't really help me with healing But it helps a little bit I suppose so yeah, we'll charge this up and now we're gonna have a big boss as well it's once upon a time an extremely dangerous boss that was an intense adrenaline filled action moment because it was so this hard to get here. We still have a risen priest to put down. So here it is, the risen priest of Balthazar. Once upon a time an Orion. And look, he just stomped the ground and immediately killed one of the players in the area. Uh, so this guy has a lot of really deadly attacks. You'll see he's in permanent rampage. Uh, he has a break bar, but we're kind of blowing him up super hard. You only get 10 minutes to kill him. So often this would end in failure. Uh, so he says there's no use fighting Zaitan. Often this would end in failure because you couldn't kill him in time. But our players here are doing really well. We'll give lots of might. We'll blow the guy up. And, uh, you know, we could break his break bar again. He's not going to be able to preserve you, dudes. He fears away, as you can see here. Killing that priest seems to have disrupted the flow of energy to the statues behind us. Then this altar belongs to the pack now. That being was powerful enough to make me think it could return to trouble us again. Don't worry. We won't let the Risen retake this place. For the pack. Yeah, for the pack. So you notice they put victory music on. The, like, green fire in the background turns to regular fire. The lighting totally changes. His hand lights Fight up. with valor. And we claim the uh, the Cathedral of Chloris Victory. There you go. The first Cathedral meta done. And uh, that's how it looks. Cool little event nowadays. Once upon a time, it was a lot more intense. And now I'll explain and justify why it was so intense. So we get this glorious chest over here, first of all, we can loot with a ton of other stuff. So gold, loads of greens, Dragonite ore um, for the big metas. We get a, a recipe for a rune of Balthazar. Wow, I don't actually have that. Never have I had that. The recipe for the Rune of Balthazar, you only get from this? That must be rare loot from this. Wow. I'm actually really happy I got that. Holy crap. Once you unlock a recipe, it's unlocked on your account forever. So in all these years, I never actually got that loot from this chest. I didn't even know that was how you got this rune. Is that true for all the runes of all the gods? Because I usually just buy them on the trading post. Wow. That's extraordinary. Deborah has not done any crafting, so she can't look any further. But that's a cool actual thing there for me. All right, so, um, yes, why is it so hard? These days, it's not so much, but I promise you it was. It's because of the vendor that unlocks. So we get the uh, champion bag from the boss himself. We get the statue of Balthazar here. A sea-worn sculpture of the war god Balthazar remains valiant and tall atop the spoiled terrain, like embers refusing to die. A fiery energy churns within the statue, unspent and unchanged by time. We can commune with this place of power. Where is Balthazar now? What is he doing? Does he know that his uh, pr uh, his priests have been consumed by the elder undead dragon? Who knows? I just wish, wish Casey was here to see this, eh, guys? But Deborah has, uh, you know, done it in his name, and I really kind of like that. Uh, coming down, so we'll check it out. You get a karma vendor. Now, uh, they say we've dealt the da dragon a crushing blow by seizing this temple. And we say, how so? Why was it really important? Well, our assault I disrupted Zaitan's control fought. over the statues of Balthazar that were attacking our troops. Good to hear. Let's press on uh, to take on the dragon itself. Some must fight so that all may be free. Well, we need to stay here and hold the altar. You should press, your, press on that. into awe and join our forces in Malkor's Leap. So I love this dialogue here where now it guides us into Malkor's Leap. It gives me some sense that maybe once upon a time the idea was everybody should do this meta and then we'd all move on like it was a one long story. 
story. Of course, that's not required anymore. So anyway, you got that, but oh. she's also a vendor. Oh, sorry. The, uh, we just spoke to this guy here. He says, we did it. The altar of betrayal is ours, and Zaitan must sense us closing in on him. Why was this place a target? Our assault direct, uh, disrupted his control over the statues. We need to stay here. Okay, that, that bit's the same. So yeah, one temple down, five more to go. What can you offer me here? Well... So first of all, you've got exotic armor here. It costs a ton of currency, as you can see, for karma. But you can pick up a full set of exotics reasonably comfortably without even spending any gold. Karma obviously means you have to have done tons of metas and dynamic events throughout the rest of your adventure before you got to level 18 and came here. But it wasn't unheard of of new players who, you know, finish their adventure and they come here and this is their first set of really good gear. And this is kind of some of the really co cool skin stuff. Kind of like what I was getting at with Cara Flower in her seer armor in the other video, though I made a little bit of a mistake with that. Also, you can get trinkets as well. So these are Cavalier trinkets here, a special stat set you can go for. There's Lost Orion jewelry boxes, which well, I guess we'll still look at later. That was a later update. But especially, and, and all the cathedrals have got this, right? All these kinds of things. However, particularly for this one, uh, we have these items here, obsidian shards. So, making legendary weapons costs not just gold, but like all the currencies. Spirit shards, gold, and karma, and you know, a ton of other stuff. The way you make legendary weapons is you need obsidian shards. And this, when the game first came out, was the only place to get them. So if you wanted a legendary, you'd have to defeat Balthazar, and it was a really hard fight, and then you could get obsidian shards at the end of it from, from your karma. So this was a really cool nod back to Guild Wars 1, where players could enter Balthazar's realm in the mists and get obsidian shards there too. This item, this obsidian shard, written in purple because it's legendary crafting related, uh, obsidian shards were a Guild Wars 1 endgame mechanic too, item. And it's all sort of a big reference back to that. So it was really clever what the devs did, and I loved it. It was a beautiful way of honouring the fissure of woe and those adventures from back there. Uh, so yeah, defeat Balthazar, get obsidian, uh, obsidian shards. Or not actually Balthazar himself, you know, the risen priest at this temple. So yeah, that's the special thing here. None of the other cathedrals have got this extra cherry on top. I'll also note that you can buy a single obsidian shard or ten. When we defeated the Claw of Jormag, you saw victory. a similar thing. You could buy one icy runestone or ten. That's because you see this quantity thing here where I can choose how many I want. One, two, three, four. That never used to exist. This is a sort of a feature that took them many years to add. So as a stopgap, the devs get, let you buy in bulk of tens instead if you liked. So yeah, this was a huge karma sink. You needed tons of obsidian shards to make legendaries. And that's why so many of us spent so much time in the Straits of Devastation. These days, you can get obsidian shards from lots of areas of the game doing lots of different things. And so it's less important that this is really difficult and the power creep has made it easy. So, you know, it's, it's not so a pointed thing anymore but hopefully in me telling you this tale you guys can relive that experience uh, with me as though it's still 2012 but yeah so there you have it uh now we could stay here and try and defend this if we so choose or we can move on to malcor's leap which is exactly what deborah is going to do she's cleared one out she's going to keep going uh the other advantage to this obviously was you could get a hero point if you came here without capping this it'd be really hard to get this hero point because there'd just be fire and death and undead everywhere so there you go. One cathedral down, like I said. Four more to go. Deborah's going to move on now to the Cathedral of Lyssa. And while we're there, we can start looking at traits. Extremely compounding our ability to heal. So I'll see you guys for that next time. Thanks for watching.